Welcome to the Christian Perspective Channel, a place for people to learn the Word of God, the Bible. I have no affiliation with any organization in this world. My affiliation is with the Holy Spirit of Jesus Christ, who guides all believers into all truth. If you want a fearless, truth-seeking Bible study with no agenda other than learning the truth of God's Word, then this is the place for you. Welcome aboard. Thanks for joining the Christian Perspective channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss a thing. Two years later, the Pharaoh had a dreams. In his first dream, he was standing by the river and seven healthy cows came out of the river and they stood by the meadow. And then after them, seven uh, thin and unhealthy cows came and stood by the healthy cows. And the un unhealthy cows ate the healthy cows up till they were gone. And then he had another dream. There was a, a stalk of corn that grew and there were seven healthy ears of corn and then after them, there came seven unhealthy ears of corn, blasted by the east wind. And the seven unhealthy ears of corn devoured the seven healthy ears of corn. And then Pharaoh woke up, and he was troubled by his dreams. And he went and asked all the wise men and the magicians of Egypt to interpret the dream for him but none of them could interpret it. And then the butler remembered Joseph, and he told him all about how Joseph had interpreted his dream and the baker's dream, and how they both had come true. So the Pharaoh sent for Joseph to be brought out of the prison to interpret his dreams for him. And Joseph said to the Pharaoh, it's not me that interprets dreams, it's God that interprets them. And he told Pharaoh what the dreams mean are there are going to be seven years of plenty and after that there are coming seven years of famine and the seven years of famine will devour up all the good of Egypt. And God is showing Pharaoh what he is going to do. So you should find a wise man that can build storehouses and during the seven good years store up enough grain to last through the seven bad years of famine and Pharaoh said well who is wiser than you and Pharaoh made him second in the whole kingdom to do that very thing and he put him in a chariot and paraded him through the city as second in command over all of Egypt and Joseph was 30 years old when the Pharaoh made him commander over Egypt. And the Pharaoh gave him a wife from a priest, the daughter of a priest of the city of On. And with that wife, Joseph had two sons. The first son he called Manasseh, which means causing to forget because God has made me forget my father and forget all my troubles. And the second son he called Ephraim, which means double fruit, because God has blessed me and made me fruitful in the land of my affliction. Now in prophetic terms, a famine is symbolic of a famine for the word of God or for understanding the word of God. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And Jesus was called, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So Jesus is the word of God and he is the bread of life. Uh, not understanding the word of God or not having the word of God is like a famine. Um, now, the Israelites under Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob knew the word of God. This was like the time of plenty. 
And then the Israelites in Egypt fell into slavery. This is like a famine. And then Moses gave them the law at the mountain and all of God's commands and, and the Torah. This is like the another time of plenty. And then they eventually uh, fell into idolatry and leaving uh, the Word of God behind and forgetting about God and they were called and and they were carried off into slavery that is like another famine and then they came back from slavery and rebuilt the temple and that is like the time of plenty and then they eventually lost sight of God again and that is like the famine when they were ruled over by the Edomite kings and then when Jesus was born that was again a time of plenty so you see this recycling theme occurring of famine and plenty famine and plenty when it comes to God's Word and even in Christianity uh, the early church under the apostles and for a few hundred years was a time of plenty but then the Word of God was left behind and replaced by traditions and that is a time of famine and then under the reformers there was a, a re-emergence of God's Word and the importance of the scriptures and that led to a time of plenty and then eventually the, the the reformers or the protestants also fell away from their uh, initial teachings and the, it's again in the time of famine for God's word so during the years of plenty Joseph stored up all the grain in the land and he taxed the people to a certain amount of the grain and he stored it in all the cities and then when the famine started Joseph started to sell the grain and corn to the people of Egypt so that they had food and all the lands around Egypt were also in famine and they all started uh, coming to Egypt for food because they were all hearing about the food so beginning in Genesis chapter 42 now when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt to buy he sent his sons his uh, ten sons to go to Egypt to buy corn but he kept the youngest son Benjamin with him because he thought lest mischief should befall him and when they came to Egypt, Joseph recognized them, but they didn't recognize him. And Joseph asked them, who are you? And they said, we are all the sons of one father. Uh, we are 12 sons, and our youngest son is at home with our father, and one of, our, one of the sons is gone. And Joseph accused them of being spies he remembered his dreams about ruling over them so Joseph put them in a prison for three days and then he told them you may buy corn and you may go home and bring it to your father but I'm gonna keep one of you behind and unless you bring your younger brother with you back here to prove to me that you're not lying then your your brother I'm going to keep with me will never be let go. And he kept the second oldest brother, Simon. And Reuben said to his brothers in Hebrew, he said, I told you not to do any harm to the boy, didn't I? You know, now we're paying a price for it. And Joseph pretended that he didn't understand what they were saying, but he knew what they were saying. He pretended to talk to them through an interpreter. So then they, when they left, the, jo Joseph told his servant to put their money back in their sacks of corn and not say anything. And 
when they were on their journey on the way home, they found the money in their corn sacks and they thought they were afraid because they thought, oh no, now we're going to be accused of stealing the money because for some reason their money was still in the in their sacks and they had the corn. And when they got back home, they told their father Jacob about everything that had happened. And Jacob said to them, you are bereaving me of children. First Joseph, and now you've lost Simon, and now you want to take Benjamin. You're not taking him anywhere. And Reuben said, you can slay my two sons if I don't bring him back. And Jacob said, if I lose him, I will go down to the grave in sorrow. I'm not letting my son go anywhere. Now beginning in Genesis chapter 43, the famine continued on and, and they ran out of corn. And Jacob said to his sons, go to Egypt and buy more corn. And Judah said, the man told us don't come back unless you have your younger brother with you. And he said, I will be a surety for him. If, if I don't bring him back, I will bear the blame forever. And so Jacob said, Okay, uh, take some gifts with you, the best things that we have, some, some honey and spices and almonds and mirth, and also bring double the money. Perhaps it was an oversight and they will accept your story and and you will have the money with you and he said also take also your brother benjamin with you and i will pray to god almighty that he will bless you in your journey and if i am bereaved then i am bereaved when they came back into egypt joseph told his servant to make a feast at his house because they will all be dining at his house and they became very afraid because they thought, why is he bringing us to his house? Maybe he's going to try to accuse us of something else. And when they came to the house, they told Joseph's servants about the extra sacks of money, Joseph's chief servant. And the chief servant said, oh no, we have the money from when uh, you bought the corn. We're not missing any money. God must have blessed you and gave you that money. And so everything was okay. And when Joseph came home, they gave Joseph the gifts that Jacob had sent. And Joseph saw his brother, Benjamin, and he got overwhelmed and he went into another room and wept without letting them see. And then when they had dinner, uh, Egyptians did not sit and eat with Canaanites or anybody um, or with shepherds. So they had all of uh, the Egyptians at one table and Joseph at his own table and the brothers at another table. And they all sat according to birthright in order, the oldest to the youngest. But Joseph told his servant to give Benjamin five times as much as every, as the other brothers. So beginning in Genesis chapter 44, Joseph, when they were ready to leave, Joseph commanded his servant to put the money in their sacks again with the corn, and this time to put his silver cup in Benjamin's sack. And then after they left, then he told his servant, go after them and catch them. And the servant went and he accused them of stealing the cup. He said, you stole my master's cup that is used for, that he uses for divining. That's for like telling the future. And they said, we wouldn't do such a thing. If whoever is, the cup is found with, let him die. And the servant said, well, whoever the cup is found with will stay with me and the rest of you can go. And he went through each brother from the oldest to the youngest and he ended up finding the cup in Benjamin's sack. And he took Benjamin 
and told them they can go. And then they all went back to Joseph's house to try to speak for Benjamin. Judah then told Joseph this, how much Benjamin meant to his father. And Judah told him how he had put his life up for the guarantee that he would bring Benjamin home. And if he didn't bring Benjamin home, his father was going to die of grief. And Judah offered to take Benjamin's place so that Benjamin could go home. Now here we see that Judah has intervened twice on behalf of Benjamin, to Jacob and to Joseph. Judah is the son that got the blessing. Uh, through him, all the nations of the earth would be blessed. Judah ended up being the forefather of Jesus Christ. It was through the tribe of Judah that Jesus Christ was born and died for the sins of the world. So this is a, a prophetic part of Judah's life in intervening for Benjamin. Now who does Benjamin represent? I'll give you a clue. The Apostle Paul was of the tribe of Benjamin. So beginning in Genesis chapter 45 now, when Joseph heard Judah talk, talk all about Benjamin and how much it meant to his father, he couldn't refrain himself anymore. He, he broke down and cried and he told them, I am your brother and God has blessed me in Egypt. And don't feel bad about selling me to the Ishmaelites because it wasn't you that did it. It was God that did it. God brought me here to put me in this position so that I might save your lives. So go home and tell our father, thus says your son Joseph, God has brought me here to Egypt and made me ruler over all of Egypt. There are yet five more years of famine. So come here, bring everything you own, and come to Egypt, and I will feed you. So here we see, with Joseph saying uh, that you sold me into slavery, but it was actually not you who did it, it was God who did it in order to preserve our lives, bringing me here and making me ruler of Egypt. This is another symbolism of Christ, that um, he was killed and uh, nailed on the cross for our sins. The Jews nailed him to the cross, but it was done for our benefit, that it might save our lives. Thanks for joining the Christian Perspective channel. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss a thing.